Aloha and shalom. We're live for the full moon in activation. July 2023. First activation of July. And I'm so excited to be here live with you guys because we haven't done this in a minute. Kind of been going back and forth between the live and the transcriptions. So this is awesome. I know a lot of you guys have been missing the lives. Me too. It's something really special when we gather in this way. Just linking everybody from across the world live. It's just amazing. All right, I'm going to go ahead and set up while y'all are tuning in. So good to see you guys. <laughs> cool. I'm going to begin shuffling. I hope everybody's been doing well. All right, we're still in that like solstice energy, you know, we're just getting acclimated to the new season, depending on where you are in the world, right? Summer, winter. So full moon activation. What does that mean for those of you who are in the portal for the first time? Welcome back to those of you who are returning and welcome to those of you who are here for the first time. We've been doing these activations for years now and we do them every week according to the four cycles of the moon and this is the full moon activation. So the full moon is just reflecting something within ourselves, something going on within ourselves and behind all things. When the moon is full, it's a reflection of our own fullness, something coming to the light, something being revealed in its wholeness. Feel free to share this video while we're live with your family, with your friends, or with somebody who could use a positive message for the day or for the week ahead. Maybe you know somebody who could help enhance this message even further, somebody with a really powerful energy that you want to invite into the portal. You can go ahead and do that now, or you can wait till the video is over. And remember, it always gets loaded to YouTube and Instagram, Rebecca Magic as well. And let me know in the comments where in the world you're tuning in from. Where in the world are you? We've got Phoenix, Arizona. We've got Illinois. I'm in Sedona, Arizona. Just gonna go ahead and shuffle the Hebrew letters. They look like this for those of you who are new. Some of them are upside down. And remember, it's always gonna be flipped because we're on a camera. We've got Ireland in the house. We've got Virginia in the house. Sweet. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Where in the world are you? We've got Australia in the house. All right. Going to begin. So giving thanks in advance for the archetypes, faces of the one for this message that's about to come through. If you want to go ahead and just imagine you're here in the room with me, all of us together, you can imagine that you're sending energy from your hands to the deck or your inner eye to the deck, however you want to do it just to add a little extra presence to really bring your energy into the activation. We have Maine in the house, Florida in the house, Wisconsin in the house. So we're all gathering from all parts of the world to be present in this moment here now, in this moment that exists outside of time and space. It's a space of eternity. So there are no rules of time and space. It's an eternal place. And the message that will come through is one of truth, timeless truth, timelessly and multidimensionally, interdimensionally applicable message. Thank you for this message about to come through. So what is the challenge and gift, right? Because they're always one, otherwise known as the focus. Which card represents that energy for us right now at the time of this full moon? 
going into the week ahead. And what's something we've been struggling to leave behind that is sort of weighing us down and that has been waiting for this perfect moment to be revealed so that we can move forward in divine timing with our challenge, gift, focus. And then as usual, we'll pull a Hebrew ally and see what's this one sticking out. Okay, beginning with the challenge and gift, also known as the focus. Oh yeah, I'm feeling this. I'm definitely feeling this. So this is the Four of Wands. Fours are all about balance, stability, structure. And wands is the suit of spirit, fire, creativity, passion. And this is really asking us how are we making sure that we have a proper foundation in the unseen realms so that we can ensure the manifestation of all that we desire out here in the world. Okay, it's saying enough focusing on what's going on outside of you close your eyes remember that that is all a result of a past thought you can try and try and try as much as you like as hard as you like put in all the effort you'd like to create a balanced life for yourself or to create a life where you can manifest all of your desires but if you do not have that foundation within it will all crumble it will all crumble so we're being invited to look right now, right? It's like the light of the full moon is shining on all that which is not stable in our lives. All that which is not built upon truth in our lives because a stable foundation is made of truth, universal laws. A foundation cannot actually be sustainably supportive if it's not built upon these truths. It will no doubt ultimately fall. It's only a matter of time. Will it be tomorrow? Will it be a couple weeks? Even a couple years? Maybe it'll even last through this lifetime, but it will never have the quality it would have if it doesn't stand in truth. So it doesn't matter if even this lifetime it lasts, eventually it will crumble. And this lifetime, so long as you use that as the foundation, will not reach its fullest potential. So why should we wait for it to crumble? Ah, whatever, it's not even in this lifetime, so who cares, right? You might not even believe in multiple lives. You might not believe that we even come back, so who cares, right? The point is that the quality of your life will not be as good as it could have been had you set the foundation of whatever project or relationship or creative endeavor you're doing in truth. So we're being invited to look right now and, and make the change, create the shift, mend what needs to be mended, redo the foundation, even if you feel like, eh, nothing's falling yet, nothing's crumbling yet, yeah, but you're also not reaching that next level of potential. Even if things seem pretty good, they could be better. They could be so good. Things can be good, but not necessarily fulfilling. Things could be good, but not necessarily setting you up for success in all dimensions, including spiritually. Things can be good, yes, but not being set up for the next seven generations. So the more you fashion your foundations of all of your projects and relationships and everything you do in truth, the more you will enhance not only your own life, but our collective life and the life of those to come. We like to say the next seven generations and beyond. So the more you settle yourself in truth, the more you build your life upon truth, the greater the effect well into the future, it eternally, in fact, produces eternal effects because it produces an eternal light. When we act on truth, when we 
set our foundation as truth, then everything that we do upon that foundation creates light, the kind of light that is eternal, spiritual light, light that goes on forever. And you actually experience the joy and the fulfillment from that right here, right now. Right here, right now, you don't have to wait to feel the effects of that. You begin to feel it immediately. Your soul feels it. You feel fulfilled and content and blissful, proud of yourself. You feel all those things that we're always seeking, you feel them right away because your soul knows that that's what you came here to do is to produce more light. So it is actually instant gratification, just not in the way that maybe we're used to. Okay, so it's about pulling your energy in for a moment, not acting on this message yet, right? But this, this week of the full moon is all about really receiving the message because next week we can worry about the final quarter, closing it up, doing what we need to do to integrate this information. But right now it's about really just looking at it. Take your time, ask yourself, have I set myself up in such a way, right? Like my mental programming, my choice of words, how I choose to behave. Have I set myself up for true success? What is the foundation of the work that I'm doing right now? What are the, the foundations of my relationships, my projects, my work? Make sure that your soul is in it, that your heart is in it. That it's something that you really feel passionate about doing, that these relationships are what you're passionate about being in, that the work you're doing, you're passionate about doing. Because if you're not, that, that discord, that being out of alignment with what you're doing, it's going to keep you on a hamster wheel, at the least. It could actually be traumatizing. It could actually be hurtful. It can cause a lot of pain. But at the very least, it just keeps you stuck. So if we want to move forward and we want to grow and we want to, which means putting our heart and soul into what we do, because that's the only way we can truly, truly grow in ways that matter psychologically and spiritually. If we really want to do that, we have to make sure that our choices are reflecting that, that we are choosing to be in relationships and to do work and to be a part of projects that ignite that fire, the fire of the soul. Because when you choose that and you really put your heart and soul into everything, you can't go wrong. You don't want to choose things in your life, choose people in your life, choose situ situations to be a part of that don't actually call you to be present in that way. You want to put your heart and soul into things in such a way that it calls your fullest presence, calls you to really show up, you to show up, not you to show up, but you, who you really are inside because we're here to bring out that light to draw out that light to let it shine in the world so that it could do something in this world but if you make choices that are half-ass if you make choices to have people in your life to be around people to do certain work that's unfulfilling that doesn't actually call that out of you it's like a waste of time you could be doing better your job might be okay. The relationship might be okay. You might be doing a project because you're bored and have nothing better, nothing better to do with your time. But how about doing things that really call to you? That's how all areas of our life should be to really maximize our potential for growth here, not just individually, but collectively. This is what the one wants for each one of us. So how can you do that? How can you maximize your potential for, for growth in this life? And then looking at the things that are in your life that maybe you haven't been so enthusiastic about, but they are necessary in your life. Relationships that are, that are necessary. Work that is necessary. How can you make it so that your heart and soul is in it? Because now is the time. If your heart and soul is not in it, if that flame within is not ablaze, how can you get it to be? That's the challenge right now.
And we have seven of cups holding us back. But remember, everything is in perfect timing. It's all for a reason. So we have seven of cups holding us back. What that looks like in relation to this is we're so busy daydreaming, so busy trying to decide what does my heart really want? I don't know what my heart actually wants. I don't know if I should stay in this situation or if I should go. I don't know if I should stay with this work or I should go elsewhere. I don't know if I should continue in this relationship or leave this relationship. I, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Well, remember, when you're undecided, it's not the time to decide. It's time to be present with what's around you and what's within you. And then when that moment comes to decide, you will have been so present with yourself and with your situations in life that you will have enough observations and enough information to make that decision. Okay. So let go of what you don't know. When your heart feels unclear, when you feel overly emotional, just let it all go. Let it go for a bit. Step into the opportunity we have right now for this, to create a solid foundation in our lives. Meaning, don't worry so much about what direction, which direction should I go in. The truth is directionless. And if you embody it, if you embody the truth, then it won't lead you wrong. It won't lead you astray. So if you embody the truth and you really live by it and you just stay present with that and focus on that, in time, the path will be paved for you. You will know. You'll return to that space of truth within. You'll begin to resonate, vibrate with the frequency of truth and everything becomes clear from there. Then you'll always know which road to take. We only get confused when we come away from that place of truth. Okay, so we need to stop daydreaming. We need to stop saying, maybe I want this, maybe I want that, maybe I don't want this, maybe I don't want that. Forget about what you want right now as far as your relationships, as far as really anything, just accept your reality as it is right now with the choices you've made and take it from there. Take it from there. Let it go. This is what I have. This is my reality. I'm going to be grateful for what is a part of my life right now. And I trust that in time, as I light that flame within, as I live in my truth, I will know what to do as far as what choices to make, as far as what to move closer to and what to move away from. And the ally is the Hebrew letter Reish. And remember that it's going to be flipped. So if you want to see it, you can Google Hebrew letter R-E-I-S-H. Reish. Makes the R sound, the R. And the Reish has a hieroglyphic symbol associated with it, which is the head. And whenever you have the hieroglyphic symbol, whenever you're trying to understand what it means, you always associate it with the divine. So if we're talking about a head, we're talking about the Godhead the top, the highest perspective. We can't get there when we're overly emotional and we're getting lost in all of our feelings. Okay, because that highest perspective is a balance between masculine and feminine logic and intuition. We can't get there if we're drowning in our emotions and stuck in confusion, not just letting it go. We have to let it go to be able to get to that space. Okay. Just see if there's anything else we want to share here. It's also when we're imbalanced. When we're imbalanced, when we're all emotional, we're more in our emotional body, more in our feminine, we're not able to even act because we're so confused. It's almost like we're paralyzed from our feelings. Then of course we, we're not in that space. We're not in that space. And when we're doing so much of this, we can never achieve this. We can never achieve this balance. 
it's like we want to be rooted in truth but we're so busy victimizing ourselves and wallowing in our own pity and unable to to find direction but if we were balanced if we were secure in truth we would always have direction we would always have guidance because that's what truth does it's a compass it's a guide within our hearts so we really need to come out of this confusion and the drowning in our emotions so that we can come back to that place of truth come back to that clarity and have direction truth is our salvation truth is our comfort our solace it's our compass Okay, we got to get back to that place of balance. It's like I'm seeing an image of we're so lost in our emotions, but once we can come out of that, kind of let it go and step into why we're really here, right? Just focus on the truth, simply the truth, being the truth, embodying the truth. It's like then these four pillars around us light up with fire, right? They're set ablaze. And that is like a portal that we're stepping into signifying that we have locked in the foundation and we're ready to grow. But until we step into that center, into that place of truth, we can't have that, that force around us. We don't activate the portal, you know what I'm saying? It's time to activate the portal so that we can get somewhere, so that we can move forward. But we need to come out of this space. We need to come out of our emotional overwhelm to be able to do that. And the first step is really just remembering the ultimate truth that everything is one. None of this is real. None of this is real. Snap out of it. We need to remember the truth in a way that it snaps us out of this drowning in our victimization and our self pity. And that's the first step to pulling ourselves out to be able to see things from a rational, logical outside perspective it's first saying okay i remember none of this is real <laughs> okay okay then you can kind of laugh at yourself a little bit you can laugh at the situation a little bit you can begin to relax and let it go and not take it so personally and then from there you say okay it's not real this is teaching me something what is it teaching me then you can get the lesson, return to truth, and start fresh from a proper foundation. Okay, so with this as the ally, the letter Rache, it's the Godhead, which means it's a perspective of balance. It's a perspective that includes both intuition and logic. If we can return to that space, which the Godhead is in the heart, right? So if we could return to that space and get with that balanced perspective, then we can pull ourselves out, no doubt, by remembering the truths that emanate from that perspective, the truths that we find when we are resting in that space of perception. When we return to that place, Rish, return to that higher perspective, we can detach, pull ourselves out, and get ourselves back on track. Time to work on the foundation. So the foundation should be built upon this vision because this vision, Godhead vision, is what sees the truth, knows those laws, and can help you to build a foundation that is going to be appropriate, that's going to create sustainable work, that's going to create a space for you to feel safe, confident, to grow. Okay, so I hope this activation was helpful and I thank you guys for doing this with me and bringing your beautiful energy into the space. I know it's been, I just put, put the card back so I'm just looking for the race to take it out because I actually leave the cards out on my little altar here all week. Do you guys do that? Let me know. So I'm just looking for it right now. I want to just thank you guys though for being here and making this activation possible with me. It's it's so meaningful and it's such a different experience than when I transcribe it because being together is everything. <laughs> and um, I do have a group on Facebook called the Archetypal Alliance and we can meet there. It's a private group. We can meet there anytime to talk about how the activations resonate with you every week. 
or if they don't, you can reach out for help to try to connect the dots. Um, it's helpful when we share how it relates to us personally because it can take all of us deeper when we relate. Relatability is key because it's compassion. Relatability is compassion. It's seeing ourselves in each other. So feel free to join the private group, Archetypal Alliance. There is also a private group called Shabbat Crew where I post every Friday about the current Torah story and what it means from a Kabbalistic perspective and how it relates to our lives. So feel free to join us there as well, Shabbat Crew. And thank you to those of you who have been donating. Some of you have been regular donators every week and I think that's just amazing. It's so beautiful. I feel your appreciation, your gratitude, and I feel your commitment to the activations and to healing, to bringing more light into the world. So thank you for your donations. The links are all on my wall, facebook.com slash Royal Path Tarot. All the links are there. Feel free to private message me if you have any questions. Remember, I'm on YouTube and Instagram, Rebecca Magic as well. If you want to share this video, but you don't have uh, your friend who you want to share it with is not on Facebook, maybe so you can send it elsewhere. Uh, feel free to share this with your favorite groups here on Facebook. And what else? I am offering readings one-on-one. -on -one. A lot of you have been asking me. I am still offering them at this time. I'm also doing recorded readings so that you can play them back to yourself. Super simple. Send me your questions. I send you the reading in a recorded audio. Um, I am I do have limited availability for live, but I am doing it. So if anybody's been wanting a reading or if you've been wanting to gift a reading to a family member or a friend in need, I do all ages, anybody. So feel free to read the reviews on facebook.com slash Royal Path Tarot or reach out to me with any questions. Many blessings, you guys. I'll be doing this work with you. Please, please share how this resonated with you and how you're working through this week's energy with the help that we've been given in this message. Love you guys. I'll see you next week. Shalom.